Good morning, heart and soul. Y'all know, because you just saw the image, that we continue to rock with adventures in faith. And then we've added moving forward together. The adventures in faith part of that, you know, that's been our theme for, well, at this point, several years. Can I just tell you that it kind of rolls off my tongue. And I'm not always thinking about specific adventures in faith. I just know by the time I get to you, by the time I stand here behind a podium, I have been on an adventure in faith. But what y'all don't know necessarily is that this morning, we, those of us staffing the service, have been on an adventure in faith. Now, those of you on Facebook, you know we've been on an adventure in faith, and my sense is that you've been praying for us, and we have evidence that, pr more evidence that prayer works, additional evidence that prayer works, because we were not up on Facebook, we were not able to broadcast to Facebook, and we were a little tentative in getting to YouTube. Zoom, you see, this is why you, some of y'all, if you can, meet us on Zoom, because that's your more, that's your absolute, straight, direct place to be in order to get to us and experience all that we're up to, regardless. L allow me to say thank you, thank you, thank you for you joining us, howsoever you had to join us. And thank you, a shout out to the staff, to the, to the Love Stream team for getting it up. You know, we take that for granted. We just like get here and you press a button to, uh, to uh, get to the link and we just like, yeah, this is gonna be. And then on a morning when you get there, it ain't nothing there. We begin to think about and give thanks for whatever is required in order for the thing to happen. And so right now I just pause and give thanks for everything. And L allow me to say that I don't even know everything that needs that. Y'all assume I know. I do not. I do not know everything that had to happen, who had to be where, what they had to do, how they had to do it in order for us to be live right now. You know, our sanctuary is closed. And so if we were not broadcasting, we would not be having a service. Period. So I'm really grateful really grateful for the divine unfoldment of this and how this allows us to be moving forward together. That's the part right there. So look, this is a moment of remembrance for me because as I said, we take for granted. You know, I show up to do my part and like magic, you know, I appear on the screen and the sound is working, but it isn't magic. So right now, I'm in a place of remembrance and divine recollection of what is required. It requires that we work together. It requires that we, that we pool our divine ideas. It requires that we kind of pool our, pool, P-O-O-L, pool, put together, combine, make a collective, our collective, what, what has been called race thought that we can refer to as the collective consciousness, that there is an opportunity for us to, to bring together our love, our trust. Because when I remember to remember, I imagine justice. I imagine I'm, I'm no longer satisfied with the status quo with the status quo, with, with how it has been or how it is right now, I continue to imagine justice. I live in the now, and I'm knowing something quite magnificent is unfolding out of this now moment. So look, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, and this is, this is a, a very familiar quote in the world and certainly in heart and soul, that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Injustice anywhere, including your heart, including your mind. We're not talking about pick a country, pick a continent where there's injustice. 
we're bringing this home. We're talking about our work. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So the injustice that we might be holding or are holding is a threat to justice in the universe. He says we are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality. We're in this thing together. This is like he, he, Al, um, Al Jarreau and Dr. Martin Luther King here are riffing on that we're in this love together. That's what that network of mutuality is. That we're tied, Dr. King says, in a single garment of destiny. None of us gets there unless we get there. He says, whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. So I say to you, begin imagining justice immediately. For a good while, years ago, I was attracted to the words of Dr. Mark Lamont Hill. And in particular, the quote in which he says that we have to be able to build a world that doesn't even exist. I need you to hear this. Hear, not just through your, through your ears, not just your auditory system, your auditory um, system, but through your heart. Because some of us are waiting for it to be built and then we're going to get in. We're going to align with it. We're going to live there. We're going to participate. We're going to help out once it's established. I've come today to say there's some work for you to do right now. And part of that is to understand that it doesn't exist yet and it, that it requires a different imagination. So that's like the, the calling, not the, or the mission even, the calling and the mission of our imagining justice, the, the circle that meets on Wednesdays. They, they meet at 6.15 and begin their meditation then, and then they, they have their program offering at 6.30. And this is almost every Wednesday. And when it isn't, we let you know in advance so that you can schedule. So what I want you to know is that it isn't just named Imagining Justice because that's like catchy. It's, the, it's our collective intention. So we call it Imagining Justice. That was born out of the visioning process. And that's how we got the moniker. And we use it to remind us of our collective intention, of what our mission is, of what our vision is. So look, this is... Part of this whole idea of imagining what has not yet happened at the level at which we envision it. Because that's what is that. That's, that's what you don't need your imagination if it's already done. You just look at it and get busy in it, right? I mean, I just want us to agree that when we engage our imagination, ideally, well, let's tell the truth. When we engage our imagination, we either imagine in something we don't want or something we do want. I was going to act like we always imagine in what we want, but that's not true. Often we invest light years in imagining what we do not want to happen, what we do not want to experience. I'm going to focus right now on our intention to imagine what we envision, our heart's desire, that all of the children are fed and educated, that all of the elders are safe, that we are imagining a time when there is no pipeline from school to prisons. We're imagining where else can it begin but in our imagination. So look at here. Here's how, here's how they've kind of built the system. They've built it around this concept, this, this design of Saubona. And Saubona is Zulu for, well, very simply translated, it's I see you. Oh, but it's not just you in my eyesight. It is instead saying everything in me recognizes the truth of who you be and how you got to be. 
not because I know you or know your family or somebody told me something, but because I'm willing to tap in using my imagination that just as I'm willing to know myself, I'm willing to know you through loving eyes, through a loving sense. They say very specifically, they use this Zulu greeting as an invitation to participate in each other's lives. This is that mutuality that Dr. King spoke of. This is that collectiveness that I was speaking of, this collective intention to imagine justice. It is a deep witnessing and acknowledging of a deep presence. So they pose some questions in part as, as a way to get to their programming. These are some of the questions, as I understand it, is how do we see each other? Because that has a lot to do with how we're going to be with each other. They say, why are we here at the same time? Let's not just assume that we accidentally, knowing there's no accidents, let's not just assume that this is a quirk, a dysfunctional moment in the universe. Let's dig more deeply into how is it that we're here? How is it that you tuned in today, right now? How is that? And then not try to figure it out so much as to take advantage of that awareness. Look at us. We're right here, right now. What are we going to do with that? How can we be in that? What has this moment given us the wherewithal to do? You're here. I'm here. What can we do with all that beautiful energy? How must I be in order for you to be free? See, I'm never going to know that if I don't see you. If we don't have a Salbona moment. You see, in a world of imagining justice, Everyone must be allowed to participate. In a world of imagining justice, everyone must be allowed to participate. I have the honor of bringing forth now our co-leads for our amazing imagining justice circle. Valerie Joy Fidmont and David Walker. So greetings everyone. My name is Valerie Joy Fidmont and I am a co-founder and co-host of Imagining Justice at Heart and Soul Center of Light. And I am also the Minister of Music for Heart and Soul Center of Light. And I practice spiritual principles in music and in community at IJ and I just want to extend my greatest um, warm gratitude to Reverend Andriette for the idea, which we'll talk about this later, and for the opportunity to work with Mr. David Walker Jr. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, sister. And it is indeed a pleasure and an honor uh, to co-lead Imagining Justice with you. Uh, this has been a phenomenal experience. Uh, again, my name is David Walker. Um, co-lead of Imagining Justice. I'm also a board of trustee member, a treasurer for the board of trustees at Heart and Soul. Um, and I'm actually on the practitioner track. And Imagining Justice was my first entree into sacred service at Heart and Soul. And now I can't get nowhere and sit down. I'm all over the place. <laughs> um, it's, it's my love of service. It's my love of living principle and allowing principle to, um, to express as love through service. So uh, Imagining Justice, again, was my first entree into uh, anything outside of Sunday celebration. Uh, I had been on my own social justice journey up until the time I got to, to California in Oakland. And I had been looking for a place where I could actually bring my spiritual self uh, into um, this realm of social justice and be able to do it in a community of beloved people. And when I tell you, imagining justice was, a, was an answered prayer. So Val, I'm, I'm super thankful and grateful for the work that you and the folk before me put into creating the space. Uh, I often say that I'm standing on the shoulders of folk who put in the time and the effort and the energy 
to create something quite magnificent for me to be able to lean into and to serve. And I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful. Um, so I'm going to take an opportunity now and kick it back to you uh, yeah. so we can share with the people how we get down at Imagining Justice. All right. The journey of Imagining Justice, all the good things. Yeah. I, okay. So first of all, I want to say that Imagining Justice started as a result of visioning. And I want to acknowledge Reverend C. Michael Woodstock and Minister Sherry Murphy, who, who did the visioning and myself who were all part of a visioning that went for a few months. Um, and it was as a result of some guidance from Reverend Andriette on how, how to engage our heart and soul community uh, into a greater awareness of spiritual activism. And it's it's just been extraordinary. I'm gonna share the screen, okay, and and share um, what this has been for us. And it has been again, like I said, I'm coming in to something that was beautifully established um, and able to add, you know, add who and how I am to the mix. So I'm excited to hear you share this journey with with the people today. Yay. <laughs> Check it out. Okay, so we're a weekly forum, everybody. We meet every week from September to May, and we combine dialogue, interactive participation, community engagement, artistic expression, all of those things to, to really inspire practical daily application of spiritual principles. We are, we are seeking to know how to live in this world and practice spiritual principles on a regular basis. And that includes needing to create new stories about who we really are and seeing ourselves that way. And also it means empowering our prophetic voices of justice. And, and I believe that we all have it, have one, I would say. And we are the ones that we've been waiting for. There's no one, we're not, we're not sitting back waiting for some uh you know quote unquote savior to come in and fix it all right we are the ones who have the creative power right right amen take that shift amen so it all started everybody with this quote reverend andriette shared one, one service back in 2017 we have to be able to build a world that doesn't exist yet that's a different imagination. Mm. And that, that just started us off. Um, I want to say that imagining justice has some core things with all that we do. Our core value is Saobona, which, which means I see you. It's a Zulu greeting and invitation for us to participate in each other's lives. And these are some of the questions that we grapple with on a regular basis. How do we see each other? Why are we here at the same time? What has this moment in time given us to be able to do? And how do I have to be and how do we have to be in order for, for us all to be free? Ooh, I remember in one Imagining Justice Serum us, um, experience, someone mentioned the fact that my dream does not have to be somebody else's nightmare no. <laughs> and, and, when I th and when i think about that last line how do i have to be in order for my brother and my sister to be free yeah yeah and, and what we learn in terms of, of science of mind principles it always begins with self Amen. It always starts here. So how can I be? How do I get to be in order for someone else to be free? Yeah. I, that is a that is a that is a different level of that's love in a in a whole nother way. <laughs> when we, you know, thinking about someone else. Yes. And how my behavior and how I show up. Yeah, impacting them. That's that's an ima that's imagining a world. That having that be a common state of practice is imagining a world that doesn't exist yet. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And we're actively doing it. We are, and I thought of something else, but I can't remember now. So I'm going to keep going. It'll come back. It'll come back. So in, in a world, this is what we've learned and what we practice. In a world of imagining justice, 
everybody needs to be able to participate, but not everybody is the same way. We're talking about creating a world that works for everyone. And that means creating a world in which everyone is able to participate where they are feel comfortable. So for some, there have to be safe spaces for us all. And for some people, that's their particular focus. And there have to be play spaces. And here we've identified what safe spaces and play spaces uh, mean for imagining justice, healing harm, restoring inner justice, addressing root causes of behavior. Those are all necessary for creating safe space. And in play spaces, how do we collectively take action? How can we take courageous action? And what does that even mean? We're not here to tell people what to do. We're here to encourage people to identify what is mine to do? What is mine to do? And how can we collectively leverage our resources? And where is the conversation not being heard? Those are guiding principles for where we get to play. David? What I appreciate about about this approach with safe places, excuse me, safe spaces and play spaces, is that there are elements of diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging that are integrated all throughout this approach. So the fact that we can bring spiritual principle Mm -hmm. to ideologies and concepts and ways of being that are that are uh, that are collectively understood, or that folk have a an awareness around. I think is a beautiful thing, right? Mm-hmm. That even even in our approach to um, to create safe spaces and play spaces, diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging, all wrapped in love. Yes, yes. Right? Ooh, love is the key. Love, love, love is the key. Love is and the, the key. And, and the driver. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Speaking of love being the key. Ooh. Yo, we're really into this. Our electromagnetic fields. <laughs> this right here wears me out every time. Every time. It, it, it just shows how powerful we are. Yeah. And let me speak from the eye. It shows me how powerful I am. And because of the principle of oneness, I know that if it's true for me, it is true for everybody else by right of consciousness. This diagram shows that through my thoughts and through my emotions, I can energetically emit mm. a frequency yeah. Yeah. that is, that ripples. Yeah. yeah. If I'm, as I think and know love in my heart and in my mind, I can intentionally emit love. Yes. I can intentionally emit harmony and peace and joy, all of the building blocks that are creating the world that we want to see. Yes. Each person has an opportunity to bring in their own building block by what is being emitted from here and what's being emitted from here. We are powerful. Yes. Beyond our knowing. Yeah. And all we have to do is use heart or heart and mind yes and imagining justice is creating the incubation space for all of that to happen in ways that are unique and individualized expressions of the oneness of god yes what come on (laughs) yes and mindful and mindfully you know, yeah. really, because that's what I remember what I was going to say earlier. I what I know in terms of how do I have to be in order for you to be free? I know as a result of imagining justice and practicing Salabona that I cannot keep people hostage. I will not hold anybody hostage with my mess. I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm going to work through my stuff because I know that my thoughts and emotions affect the heart's magnetic field. And I know there's an energetic effect on my environment and everybody around me. This is it. We get to practice this. And we get to practice it in our own individualized ways in our own lives. And we get to bring it together collectively on Wednesday nights at 6 yes. Absolutely. And yes. you have that energy 
Mm-hmm. You have a collective of folk with an intention of having a focus on what's being admitted from head and heart. Mm-hmm. That has to be causing a shift on the planet where, where there are collective, a group of folk collectively of one mind. Yeah. yeah. Like, and that's one of the reasons why I, I, I really appreciate being a part and being a co-lead of Imagining Justice is because it holds me accountable. We have, we have, we have the very powerful experience on Sundays at, during the Sunday celebration. And Wednesday is that midweek pick me up where as I've journeyed from Sunday until Tuesday night, I know that Wednesday coming up, I'm going to be in a space where <laughs> the electromagnetic field of the heart, Sal Bona, um, creative ways of expressing are going to be a part of my experience. Got to practice. Got to practice. Practice makes permanent. Yep. And we're practicing. We're, we're the dope and killing part is that while we are practicing, we're actually doing practical application of principle and oh practice is actually the work. How about that? That's it. That's it. <laughs> oh, this is it right here. Woo! Hey, that is it. Yes. Come on. We are creating a world that works for everyone, planting beautiful seeds that are are falling on fertile soil mm. in imagining justice and bring bringing forth a manifestation that only we can bring. We're the ones we've been waiting for, good people. Mm. Listen, Valerie and I, this is a this is a labor of love. Like Valerie mentioned that she is also a director of music, the music ministry. The music, yeah. And I know in my personal experience with you that social justice is all in and throughout the music <laughs> and, the, and the way that it, and the way that you express it um my life is built on social justice always has been uh for from as long as i can remember my mom had me marching in something or passing out flyers for something uh you know being engaged and being involved and we get to do it in an organized way with people that we love and care about Absolutely. i don't know anything more beautiful Speaking of speaking of the people that we love and care about, we've got some folk who want to share a little bit about their imagining justice experience. Check them out. Check them out. Thank you, everybody.
Greetings, everyone. My name is Minister Sherry Murphy. I am a licensed practitioner and also a former co-facilitator of Imagining Justice at Heart and Soul Center of Light. There is a phrase, treat and move your feet, I often hear referencing one of our science of mind principles we endeavor to practice here at Heart and Soul, prayer. And when it comes to community outreach, what I believe this phrase is pointing to is the spiritual imperative to stand for bold policies that address the most effective strategies to deal with violent crime, while at the same time, standing for bold policies to address poverty. We must treat and move our feet, yielding to our spiritual compass in an effort to embody a greater understanding of our oneness, of our common humanity, of our connection. This looks like attending meetings with other faith members, labor representatives, city officials. It also looks like engaging in strategies like digital and social media engagements, walks, caravans, speaking at council hearings. And in the forefront of all of this, community outreach involves a commitment to be in solidarity as we collectively forge a new pathway which stops the violence, heals our souls, and reimagines safer communities. Come join us in treating and moving our feet, calling in love through our willingness to learn new things and act on new insights. And so it is. Well, good afternoon, heart and soul. This is Lynette Gibson McElhaney, your friend, former council member of the city of Oakland. And I'm stopping by today to celebrate with you the powerful ministry you all call Imagining Justice. I'm delighted to be a supporter of IJ because IJ is doing the magnificent work of shifting the atmosphere, of changing our world. And it is true. We know that everything in life exists in frequency. And the work that you all are doing to change the frequency within, to manifest a different frequency beyond, is what is needed in these troubled, troubled times. I've known IJ for quite some time. And it was my honor and privilege to support the summit where we got to be with thought leaders from across the country and where after each session, I personally felt more connected, informed, hopeful, lifted, healed. As you all well know, a son of your ministry, my son, Victor, was taken from us far too soon through gun violence, gang violence in Los Angeles in 2019. And it's IJ's work not only to imagine a world so just and so secure, there is no one helpless, hurting, homeless, harmful, <laughs> that work to shift the atmosphere. It's IJ leaders who are informed by this great care that hold families like mine in dire times of grief and sorrow. So it is my honor to celebrate your great work, to encourage you to keep doing the work because you're doing more than protesting against injustice. You're doing more than trying to stop hate. What you are doing is unleashing a love revolution. What you're doing is transforming hearts and minds and the energies that surround us all. And for this, I am incredibly grateful. Continue to do the good work. And I'm going to be here to support you and join in with you every step of the way. God bless you. May God be with you until justice is secure. Ashe. Hello, Heart and Soul Center of Light. My name is Gwen Austin, Community Engagement Manager for Building Opportunities for Self Sufficiency, also known as BOSS. We want to send a short message of gratitude to you for your support for the work that we do 
in our communities throughout Alameda County. Since BOSS's inception in 1971, we have tirelessly been committed to those who are the most vulnerable and are often living on the edges of society. I'm talking about our unhoused communities, primarily. BOSS creates programs that all des people deserve and need in order to prosper. The programs created are to help turn lives around. Programs and services expanded over the, five, over the past five decades to include services for unhoused, disabled, and low-income individuals, families, and neighborhoods in Alameda County. In 2013, executive leadership expanded the mission and began developing solutions for mass incarceration and violence in the community as unaddressed crisis stemming from racially biased policies and systematic inequities. BOSS now has programs and services throughout Oakland to address this through our impact hubs in downtown, east and west Oakland communities. Today, BOSS is recognized as a social justice leader with housing, reentry, violence prevention, along with innovative service delivery methodologies. In 2021, with your support, BOSS work included, and this is, I'm not giving the whole list, I'm just gonna give you a few things that we, we did in 2021 with the help of your donation. We opened 21 new units of housing for women with children in East Oakland. This is primarily out of the reentry programs. We opened 15 medical respite and 19 non-respite total home units at our Fairmont Campus Navigation Center. We opened a new West Oakland RV Safe program, and we also launched a reentry providers association of California, which is called REPAC. It's a statewide advocacy organization to create impacts with criminal justice policies for individuals, families, and communities. Once again, on behalf of BOSS, board of directors, and staff, we thank you for your continued support.
I attend Imagining Justice because it's a safe space to have deeply spiritual conversations in a community of deeply spiritual people. When I imagine justice, I think of the slogan, no justice, no peace. Justice is our gateway to peace and peace is collective happiness. We must be aware of what and how we ignite happiness in our lives and find ways for our happiness to coexist effortlessly with everyone in every moment. We imagine a world that works for everyone and do what's necessary, righteous and just for that creative image to become a collective reality. I go to Imagining Justice to learn, to grow, to be in beloved community, and to be challenged and inspired to be the best version of myself that I can possibly be in the world, and to help make a world that works for everybody. There's a quote I really love by the activist and thinker Grace Lee Boggs, where she said, the revolution starts with the transformation of ourselves. And for me, Imagining Justice is a place where we work on that, where we practice the inner change that then leads to outer change. And we address the outer change too. IJ brings amazing people from our heart and soul community and beyond to share the work that they're doing in the world. And I learned so much from our conversations and from all the people that regularly come to IJ. There's so much creativity and brilliance in our community. And I see Imagining Justice as an opportunity for me to put what I've learned at Heart and Soul into practice, the spiritual principles. Um, it's the most beautiful ongoing demonstration of the principle of Salbona, where we deeply see and witness each other. And I think we ask and really strive to answer the question of who do I need to be so that you can be free. In Imagining Justice, I get the opportunity to share my thoughts and my visions, to learn and teach, and to give and receive insight, practice love, compassion, and non-judgment. I recognize that in order for us to thrive in this world, we must all work together towards building a better quality of life for everyone. Imagining justice explores ways that we can be and affect change that better the lives of us all. We practice Sawabona, really witnessing deeply for one another, seeing each other as divine human beings, having a human experience simultaneously and clearly for a divine purpose. Hi family, I'm Damali Robertson and I have been part of the Imagining Justice family since its inception. I can remember when we started this journey together toward justice. And one of the things that I wanna say about why I love this space so much is this space is literally creating the world that we want to see and be part of. It looks at justice, not through that literal lens, but through that spiritual lens. And so every week I feel like we are treated to a new idea, a new way of trying on justice, and a new way of asking ourselves, how do we be the justice that we wanna see? And as a poet, as a social justice advocate, as someone who believes that in self-actualization and liberation as the highest value and expression of us as people, imagining justice just makes me come alive. And I really want you to come join us. Imagining justice for me is the social justice heartbeat of heart and soul, putting what we believe into the world. It's the emphasis on love that's so central to imagining justice that stays with me in all of my community work, in all of my writing. I recently published a memoir that took years of grappling with the title as all my books do, before I woke up one day with loving before loving a marriage in black and white. It was the right one. That title conveys love. 
as well as social justice history. If you notice, loving is in there twice. In my author newsletters, I'm noticing my central theme increasingly is love, which headlines every issue. You know, that um, reparative concept has permeated my consciousness in all of my writing, my community organizing. I spread that message in every, every action, everything I do. And the program, the Wednesday night meeting of Imagining Justice crystallizes that for me. I tend to support Imagining Justice because it's fun. It encourages building community. It encourages authentic, focused, truth-telling and dialogue. It's innovative and it's spiritual. I love the energy of the co-leadership of Valerie Joy Fidmont and David Walker Jr. who are pure love. They're focused, they're committed, they are diverse and they are inclusive. I love the people who are attracted and attend Imagining Justice. Imagining Justice to me means that there's a safe place for me to practice being spiritual, political, and socially conscious. It is both an honor and a privilege to share with you why I value the experience of regularly attending Imagining Justice. Imagining Justice is a loving, safe, supportive, and nurturing space to gather with like-minded people. Each week, the fabulous co-leads, Valerie jo Joy Fidmont and David Walker invite dynamic presenters who lead us in deeply inspiring conversations and interactive experiences. These experiences support us in practicing the principles we learn in science of the mind. What we learn by attending Imagine Justice, we have the opportunity to share with others. For example, when we viewed the Stacey Abrams film, Suppressed, The Right to Vote, I hosted a film viewing and facilitated a workshop with a group of college students. I have applied so much of what I've learned at Imagining Justice in my teaching and in every area of my life. Imagining Justice is IJ, as we affectionately call it, is a space where I can think about and, and process the issues of the quote unquote world as spiritual matters. Um, build skills, engage in deep discussions about the work and what we're trying to do and what this looks like. What does it mean to live the principles on the day-to-day -day life in this world? So I feel like it's a perfect accompaniment to what Revy has to say on Sundays, that we get to dig in on Wednesdays and think about this in in our own context to share. It's interactive. It's it's. I find it to be a space also where um, we really think about this, this vision that we have as a community and as a, 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 a larger faith, I don't want to say denomination, but, but yeah, community about what does it mean to build a world that works for everyone. Wow. So first of all, we just want to say thank you. Thank you to everyone who who participated in this Imagining Justice presentation. Thank you for everybody who's ever participated, ever presented. Thank you to everyone who's ever participated and presented in the Urban Mindfulness Summits. Look, we are who we are because of you. So thank you so, so very much. And thank you to the Health and Wellbeing Circle. Thank you to Reverend Sonia Russell and Nancy Marmalejo for supporting us with admin and social media. And most importantly, thank you, Reverend Andriette Earl, Reverend Dr. Andriette Earl for your vision and for your support and trust. Join us, join us and join us. If you're looking for a space to bring your authentic prophetic voice, if you're looking for a space to lean into social justice in a way where there are safe spaces and play spaces. If you are looking for a place where there is 
at the end of the day, at the core of it all, love, join us. If ever a change is gonna come, it starts with me. When all of my ducks are in a row, it allows me to see. I know whatever I need is there, just wait. Step in and start right now Creating whatever I see A time for transformation That heals my private nation Whatever I can be All I need to do is see transformation whenever I feel I need a change I open my heart to wonders that spirit brings upon me I'm ready to start I know whatever I need is there just waiting for me step in and start right now creating whatever I see it's time for transformation to heal our thirsting nation whatever we can be all we need to do is see it's time for transformation to heal my private nation. Whatever I can be, all I need to do is see. It's time for transformation. bring you an adaptation of something Ernest Holmes or others have done so that 
you can also locate it and do something more with it. You know, not just have the prayer come and go, but that you can bring it into your heart and mind. So in 365 days, 365 Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes for January 30th, it is entitled, I Surrender All Fear and Doubt. Just join me in prayer. You might begin by allowing your eyelids to close by just bringing to a calm silence and divine availability focusing your attention inward I offer you from the 12th chapter of Luke fear not little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Fear not. It is the Father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom. Just say that. To give me the kingdom. And now just allow my words, my voice, to speak this prayer on our collective behalf. What I know and I know that I know for sure is that there is one life. And that that life is whole, it's perfect, it's complete. It's the life of the divine, divine source, the living one, the strong one, the all in all. And I know and declare, because I know it's the all in all, because I know it's divine source, I know and declare that we are all beneficiaries of the life of the living one, the strong one, the life we are living and that is living us. I declare that we know we didn't put the chicken in the egg or the oak tree in the acorn. I declare that we also know that we take a mouthful, that we make use of all of that, that there's a divine process that is present. We do not create the divine presence or the law of good. We commune with the presence and we use the law of good. We engage it. Just as the master teacher, Yeshua said, it is your father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. And it is our business, our responsibility to receive it. It is my father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom. Say that to yourself now. It is my Father's good pleasure to give me the kingdom. It is our Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. I speak this word for everyone within the sound of my voice, that today I accept this divine kingdom, that I am given graciously and generously, and I accept it in its fullness. Because of my acceptance, my day reflects justice, joy, and happiness and is filled with peace. It is permeated with the silent power of spiritual wisdom and love, har harmoniously and happily, governing my thoughts, my decisions, my acceptance, so that everything I do is done with ease and grace. I lay all weariness aside and I accept the life-giving, invigorating, dynamic activity of spirit, knowing that it vitalizes every organ of my body, my physical body and the body of my affairs. It flows with power and strength and purpose through everything I do. And it leads me gently down the pathway of life I declare that we are indeed moving forward together in knowing this truth. Today, today is the day the divine source, the living one, the strong one has made, and I am glad in it. I welcome 
the cool shadows of justice and grace and peace as it all falls across my pathway and enters my soul, all the while the beatitude of the Spirit flows through me as a river of life. Just as in Psalm 1, and I shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water whose leaves never wither, who bears fruit in its season. Oh, I just give thanks. I give thanks for knowing and experiencing that God is good. And so it is an absolute perfect gratitude for all that has been accomplished this day, for the entire contribution, for everything required to bring us to this amazing point in time, this fertile moment out of which the next moment must come. This is the moment out of which our success, out of which our prosperity, the abundance of all things good must come. There is no other moment. So it is an absolute perfect gratitude that I let go, that I release this word into the absolute perfect activity of law. I know it's not possible for this, to, this word to return void, it must absolutely produce in like kind. And so I let it do that. I let it be exactly what it be. Good and very good for all of us now and forevermore. And I let it be. Sealing this by saying, Ashe. Amen. And so it is. Love matters.